the highlights of Argentina and Brazil. The arc rivals ending 2 0 in favor of the Samba boys, and of course, this is Copa America coming to the culmination this particular weekend. Brazil playing Peru while Argentina play Chile in a third place playoff. Gentlemen, we have to speak about matters international football before we wrap up with you know your predictions with regards to round of 16 fixtures for this particular weekend. What's happening to Argentina? Should Lionel Messi just announce the retirement? Because the team seems to be revolving around him until other players can perform. When they have the ball, they have to give it to Messi and much pressure on him. Uh, to me, I think Messi, Messi has just, uh, has just uh, given himself that pressure. And everyone else has, uh, has piled that pressure on him. Because, you see, uh, Messi has not won a major trophy. Uh, with the, in the national team color. Because when you look at it, uh, we, when you compare his performance uh, with Barcelona and his performance when he's playing for his national team, uh, Argentina, uh, those two uh, are not reading from the same page. You'll find that he's giving a lot for Barcelona and giving less for his national team. I don't know if it's a curse or it's a bad omen. I really don't know for him. But if I were him, I would have just retired peacefully. <laughs> but do you, think, do you think it is his wish to perform very well at club level and fail to replicate the same at the national team level? I think this should be an all-inclusive, whereby it's not, it should not be about Messi alone. It should be about uh, collective, teamwork, responsibility. collective responsibility, yeah. teamwork, team play. Because you see, the moment you pile that pressure on one person, he, he will be uh, overwhelmed will be exhausted. Because when you look at the national team, everything uh, revolves around Messi. Which, to me, I think that uh, it's too much for him to handle. It's too much uh, uh, on the plate for him to handle. We should actually, they should, as, as, as Argentina, they should actually look for a better way of handling Messi. It should not be like, any ball you get, where is Lionel Messi? Everybody get where is Lionel Messi? Because they want him. I think they want, they want to give him a, something like a, a good send off. Yeah. Immediately after that outcome, you know, debate <laughs> of <laughs> who is the best between CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo, the mm. Portuguese international, and Lionel Messi uh, was revived. And do you think it's <coughs> high time now Messi? fails to rescind his decision after announcing retirement. Because talking about the Argentina attacking department, they have plenty of options in Sergio Kun Aguero, yeah. in Paulo Dybala, Ezekiel Laveza, I think nowadays is not getting uh, favored on the pecking order. But what's the solution for Argentina? Now that their main man has failed to perform the way he does at club level. To sparkle, yeah. Well, it, it's a tough situation, especially for someone like Messi. I mean, uh, he's been doing well at the club level, but uh, at inter international level, things are not been clicking well. But I think much should lie, the blame should lie on the, on the, on the team itself, probably, you know. This is a team that has a lot of quality, there's a lot of depth, true, but true, you still true. ask yourself, why can't they click? Yeah. Maybe we can say that they failed to click because they made the match. Brazil, which I also on paper think uh, very good players. Mm -hmm. For Argentina now, I think it's time to go back uh, to the, the drawing board. board. Yeah. And now, you know, just think of the future because, I mean, maybe in the next tournament, who knows if Messi will still be there. Mm -hmm. He's now almost he's, uh, over 30 over years. 30 years yeah. So, who knows here if Messi may probably will be in the next World Cup or maybe in the next uh, Copa America. So, I think that's one thing maybe they should, uh, they, they, they will be thinking about. But I'm, I'm very sure they'll still be wanting to keep Messi in that team because, I mean, as a nation, mm -hmm. they owe that money cup. <laughs> is it for Peru to lose tonight, uh, tomorrow? Uh, is it for Brazil to lose? Because considering that they are playing against uh, Peru side that is not well known for football. For, <laughs> for this uh, South, um, South American uh, uh, football, I, ca I can't say that. But uh, it's never guaranteed. Yeah, 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 it's never guaranteed. But uh, they, they, they have a good chance, uh, Brazil, to bag in another another trophy. Uh, having the the legs of Jesus uh, now uh, performing well in the the national team uh, Casemiro shirts. Casemiro the legs of Williams I saw Coutinho having a run so I think it's 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 a chance for them to bag another another trophy but uh, as for Messi <laughs> I, I I think I can agree with Steve it's it's that pressure that uh, is uh, being put uh, up, on upon him. upon Messi because. This pressure comes from his performance uh, from the from club the level. club level because he's doing well. He's won uh, major <coughs> trophies. He's won actually he's won a, a lot of trophies with uh, with uh, uh, with Barcelona. But now he can't uh, be. He's not able to get that, yeah. that uh, to the national team. So that <coughs> pressure is what I think uh, makes him maybe underperform uh, uh, in his uh, national team colors. But 
is is growing old as a, as Okoth is saying it's now time for for Argentina to think of the future because there are uh, uh, there, there are tournaments coming up for, for the national team uh, team and they cannot always uh, rely on uh, the uh, one man Messi. We have seen the the, the, the Lavezis there. We we've seen Di Maria in that team. No one is talking about them. They are only talking about Messi. So it's it's time to uh, look forward and maybe find a solution uh, on who now to 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 uh, carry on from uh, Messi because it's now getting old and you cannot play with Messi. Uh, and Ronaldo, because I have a problem with you, you can write like 20 posts per day <laughs> on your social media platforms, <laughs> but you never comment about Women's World Cup that is underway. What's your problem, man? Does it mean that Afcon has overshadowed <laughs> the Women's World Cup? Not really. I've been following both. Uh, just recently being part of the Chafradim Benta, I think uh, I've been following a lot of girls' football, and basically the Women's World Cup, I think that's the biggest stage of them all. So I think uh, uh, it's not that I've been following, I've not been following the, <laughs> yeah, the, the girls' yeah. tournament, but uh, I've been keen. And probably you can remember the match uh, USA versus England. I'm they eliminated my team. Exactly. Those ladies, I have a problem with them. <laughs> exactly. And uh, it was a crack of a match. I mean, we saw some beautiful football. Yes. Today. We saw some large makes. We saw some, uh, you know, side shows. I mean, it was a match that had everything. At some point, people are saying that this match is so entertaining that it, than even than even the, the, the three lions. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, it was a good tournament. Yeah. It was a good tournament. So USA against. Uh, in the yeah, final the against against the, uh, the uh, yeah. Dutch ladies, Dutch, yeah. mm -hmm. whom do you tip to go home happy and carry the day? Uh, uh, it is not going to be a walk in the park, so it's going to be a cracker, as uh, as, uh, as I may say it, because we're, look, we're looking at uh, the US, their performance, uh, their agility, their teamwork. I can say uh, they're a good team. They're a team yeah. to watch, and uh, given given the given the, uh, the the all the benefits is that uh, they they have an upper hand they have an upper hand to, uh, to win the tournament that's according to my own prediction uh, but i think the other my other two brothers here <laughs> will give a different opinion <laughs> yeah, contrary yeah. to what i've just said <laughs> I, I think uh, as, uh, as steve is saying uh despite all the controversy uh, going on between trump and one of the stars of the the, the national uh, rapino it's rapino they, they, they have an issue uh, with the president, she actually she has even said she will not go to the White House even if they win the, the World Cup. She will Cup, not yeah. be going there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 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 despite those uh, side shows, mm -hmm. they have a very very good team. We were having a conversation the other day uh, that they are playing uh, some nice football uh, uh, as compared to, to some of our East African brothers. Yeah, right. <laughs> and especially <laughs> the, 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 there was some there was some rumors that is especially Kenya. <laughs> And I think uh, going into tomorrow's match, they have an upper hand. Although Netherlands are also doing uh, playing uh, some nice football, but they have an upper hand uh, going into tomorrow's final. The transfers. Uh, Frank Lampard is off to Chelsea as their tactician, uh, replacing uh, Mauricio Sarri who left for Juventus. That's a uh, big for him. He's a former player, and we've seen several former players failing to do good in their coaching. Uh, career, career, yeah, the coaching career. Yeah, I think, uh, to, in my very honest opinion, is that uh, that was a fantastic move. First of all, bringing in a legend. He is a legend. Uh, he has been to with Chelsea for the longest, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you all saw it. Uh, it's going to be a challenge with him. Uh, remember when we brought in uh, Gianfranco Zola? It was a challenge, yes, but uh, you saw what he did. Uh, he yeah. gave us the Champions League. So it's just a matter of you knowing the tactics well, knowing the tradition, because he's somebody who has been with Chelsea for the longest time. Yeah. Okay, So I think he can fix one plus one. He can do a, a few magic there. Okay. Actually, one of the statements sure. he put forward is that, <laughs> don't worry, I know Kante's position, <laughs> best position. So, uh, he's, he's someone who has known the culture of Chelsea, he understands yeah. the team, the team yeah. and having uh, done very well in the champions, uh, championship last season, mm -hmm. I think he has, uh, he has the capabilities to, to, to be a, a top coach. We have seen, uh, as you have said, we have seen a few players who have not uh, performed well uh, coming into the coaching, but for Lampard, I think uh, from what he did last season, mm -hmm. Going it's forward, yes, it's, it's coming into uh, into Chelsea in a very bad uh, bad bad time because they they are now banned in uh, from signing players yeah. from outside. But they have uh, they have uh, gems in the in the, in the youth uh, youth system that he can bring up into uh, the the senior team that can help uh, help Chelsea uh, for for their upcoming season. So it's it's a fantastic move for Chelsea. Let's see what uh, pans out next season. 
shida ya Abramovich ni kuvuta tu kuvuta futa tu makochi but if given time i know he will uh, he will uh, perform at chelsea yeah, I, I just need to make a clarification. It was not Gianfranco Zola, but it was Roberto Di Matteo. Uh, Roberto Di Matteo was the coach of Chelsea, and he was a former player. So he came and gave us the Champions League. Yeah. So from what I can say is that uh, it always it depends on how the, 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 the tradition. Are you going to continue with the same tradition when you are a player and now you're coming in as a coach? Because uh, uh, you can see that uh, a lot has been happening with uh, Ole Gunnar as, as a former player. So he has been having a mixed reaction, mixed results. Uh, which sometimes I can say that uh, it also depends with the players. Uh, are you having that connection with the players as a coach, yeah. being a former player? So uh, let's hope for the best and uh, wish uh, Frank Lampard, the legend, all the best. And um, uh, we hope that he's going to bring in a difference in Chelsea because uh, we've been hiring and we are masters in hiring and firing. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we hired fire at our own will. So I think that uh, I can give him uh, that benefit that uh, he's going to uh, turn around things at Chelsea, uh, given that. Uh, he has been there for the longest, as I said before, and that uh, he, has, he has had at least some experience uh, playing in the, cha in the championship. So let us not just uh, start uh, no criticizing, saying that uh, will he, will he not. Let us just uh, see what uh, he has in store for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as we wind up, Juventus is uh, a club that is very busy in the transfer market, uh, has acquired Buffon back. He is back at the club, of course. Uh, Aaron Ramsey is also joined them at Turin and they are being linked with Atletico Madrid forward Anton Griezmann, so is Barcelona and even Joao Felix is joining them. But what's the overall uh, assessment about the transfers in Europe? Well, uh, I think uh, clubs, are, uh, clubs are taking shape. I mean, uh, uh, clubs are in a rush to get uh, some of their targets, some of their signings, and it only, it, they, they're only making some big statements, the likes of Juventus. I mean, they're, they're, they're already looking at their signs, I mean, it's a club that, you know, wants the Champions League trophy, you know, mm -hmm. depending on the, the guys that they're, they're signing. Look at Manchester United, bringing some very good quality young, young players. And I mean, all clubs, I think, they're in a rush to now meet their targets and maybe try and, uh, you know, get yeah. some of the best Before quality the players they can have. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can quickly add on what uh, Steve has said, I mean, Steve wants Lampard to be given time. <laughs> but they, they, can't, they can't even give me a time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's contradicting himself. <laughs> he wants Lampard to be given time, not be criticized. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, here at home, I mean, they, they want minutes ahead. So, <laughs> Fred, you have final thoughts. <laughs> I think uh, for 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 this uh, this transfer window, uh, clubs are position them uh, position themselves uh, maybe to get the good signings. We have seen uh, the the likes of Atletico signing uh, a good Joao Felix for, for for a very huge fee after. Griezmann said that he's leaving, although he has not, he has not left mm -hmm. yet. But um, let's see what pans out uh, uh, in the upcoming uh, season. Manchester United have got a very, very good, uh, a very, very good right back in the English uh, one Bissaka. One Bissaka. Yeah, actually, uh, was it this, this coach who said last season that he's, he's like a robot, he's a workaholic. So it's it's a good signing for them. Sounds a uh, uh, ring bell to to uh, they are actually young. <laughs> Maybe it's time for him now to hang his boots at, at United. So, for the likes of Arsenal's, I am an Arsenal fan. We've just seen the. Uh, a young player we from are Brazil. Just, you are getting associated with a player yeah. then you don't <laughs> even sign. <decide. laughs> yeah. we, 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 let, let's see what pans out. Let's see we, uh, whether we can get more more transfer maybe uh, exactly. funds. Exactly. Uh, yeah, funds from, from, uh, from uh, the salient stand and see whether we can get uh, good uh, uh, players to replace. Uh, we've seen uh, Rams is leaving. We've seen the right back or the, the, the uh, Lichestein is leaving and see whether we can get a uh, few signings. Chelsea for them now it's up uh, up to them to recall their players on loan and maybe now bring uh, players from the youth system and uh, try to uh, gel them into the senior team. As for Liverpool, they are so quiet in this transfer window. I, I, I'm not sure that uh, it's going to hit uh, them hard because they have a very, very good team. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, let, let, let's just uh, see what pans out uh, coming, uh, coming up uh, next season. Gentlemen, we have to wind up, but before we do, you are prediction for tonight Nigeria against uh, Cameroon in a 7 p.m. round of 16 clash then later on at 10 p.m. South Africa against the host Egypt starting with you 
Intermittable lions against super eagles. Where are you putting your money? Actually, I can say that uh, that's, a, that's a, an early final. I can say that uh, if you can agree with uh, yeah. me. Uh, the one that lacks fire, yeah. fireworks, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, will have, it will have a lot of uh, fireworks because uh, when you look at the two giants, uh, both uh, in Nigeria and, uh, uh, and uh, Cameroon, uh, I can say that um, they all have something to play for. They know that they've been out there, Cameroon uh, being the champions. Yeah. Uh, they actually need to maintain the status. So I can say that from my own point of view, it's a match that uh, we are not going to have a lot of goals because uh, they are going, both going to sit back and wait for the other to try and uh, penetrate. And uh, in my own uh, prediction, I can say that uh, a full-time nil-nil, then penalties, Nigeria sell through. <laughs> How about <laughs> the one for late kickoff at 10 p.m.? Egypt, uh, South Egypt, South Africa. Um, I can I can give my bet uh, to Egypt. Uh, the, uh, after her seeing the, after after I've seen them. Uh, how they performed throughout the tournament, they've been very consistent. That one you can actually uh, agree with me that they've been very consistent. So they might carry the day. They might carry the night uh, for for that particular match. Ronald, well, uh, I'm not to disagree with them a bit because if you look at the match in Egypt against South Africa, it's a very interesting match in, in that. And South uh, Africa's mm, got some good record against mm, the Egyptians. Exactly, and if you look at uh, individually the players in the South African side, I mean, most of them are playing in the PSL, mm -hmm. and most of them have been playing for the likes of Kaiser Chiefs, Orlando Pirates, who to me, even Mami Lodi mm -hmm. who to me have been regular Cup, Cup Champions Cup League, you know, mm -hmm. uh, players, and they've been going to the likes of uh, in Egypt playing against the likes of Alani. Alani so yeah. I think they know that uh, atmosphere well. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And playing against a, an Egyptian side that also has a lot of local based players, I mean, they, 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 there's a lot of familiarity in that team. So I think uh, Egypt being the host, I, I know they're under pressure. Well, tactically and technically, they're always uh, brilliant. And uh, South Africa, I know they'll be coming to maybe a lot of pie, maybe technique and all that. So it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting game. And uh, I know Egypt will be under pressure to try and perform, but I don't think it will be an easy match for, for Egypt. Nigeria Cameroon, uh, as uh, Steve has said, is, is, is it looks like to be one of the finals before final. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, looking at the quality of both uh, the Nigerians and the Cameroonians, um, I think uh, maybe a full time, as uh, Steve is saying, we might see a draw and then maybe uh, uh, extra time and maybe head uh, into penalties. Mm -hmm. You know, when you go into penalties. It's anybody's, it's anybody's game. game. So yeah. winning yesterday. Oh, yeah. uh, as for uh, Egypt, uh, South Africa, the problem with South Africa is that they have had a, a, a very bad record in this in this the tournament. tournament yeah. the def their defensive mm -hmm. game is mm -hmm. is uh, really their defensive that uh, third is really weak. And uh, going against the likes of Salah, they will have a, a, a lot of uh, a problems mm -hmm. uh, defending. And Egypt uh, are playing at home. Then I think uh, they, they they may be able to concede maybe a goal or two, and uh, Egypt uh, should maybe be carrying uh, the night as uh, Steve has said. Yes. Well, I think in short, uh, tonight's match it, it will be all about tactics. I mean, both all the teams will be tactical. If you will be tactically brilliant against your opponent, I think you will be carrying the day. But if you open up play, and maybe allowing to you solve some goals, I think you, the team will be going home. So it will be all about the tactics tonight. Looking at also uh, Egypt, they're playing at home and they're under pressure to perform. So I think that's one, and they have all the fans rallying behind them. I think that should be an added advantage to them. So uh, to me, looking at it on paper, is that uh, I think Maxwell, you also uh, agree to disagree. And I know maybe you know the truth where the truth lies, <laughs> and you are just trying to beat about the bush. Let uh, us just give it uh, <laughs> to Egypt. And I know you actually no upset because Benin <laughs> yesterday against Morocco, everyone yeah. was expecting Morocco to win, really? but Benin yeah. reversed the outcome. <laughs> so the same can happen with Egypt, South Africa. But I don't think tonight uh, Egypt will 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 will, will loosen the nut. I think they'll try to tighten the nut and uh, sh go. It, it can be an all system go, yeah. whereby they they'll do what we call there's a they'll do what we call power play. They'll apply power play at least to overshadow South Africa because they're playing at home. They're having the fans and they can't actually let the country down at this particular stage. Yeah. So let us just uh, sail with Egypt and agree that uh, that uh, they're gonna give us the expected result. Thanks, gentlemen, for coming through and dissect about matters football with mm -hmm. focus 
the ongoing African Cup of Nations. Remember tonight at 7, Nigeria against Cameroon, then later on at 10 p.m., the hosts, Egyptian seven-time African champions against South Africa, who had, you know, a uh, nervous campaign as far as their group is concerned, just recording win against Namibia alone, then getting beaten by Morocco and Ivory Coast in their group campaign. It's been a pleasure having you, Steve Omondi, former Gourmet defender, mm. uh, alongside Sofapaka striker Ronald Okoth and football analyst, analyst Fred Openda to come through and dissect about what is happening in the world of football. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Next time, same time, same place. On Saturday, 1 to 3, we will be doing it again, talking about matters, sporting headlines. But remember to keep it off on Nico KBC. That's the Twitter handle. Let's get along with the conversation at Wasike Maxwell at KBC Channel 1. Tonight at 10, of course, I will be on the other side, South Africa, against hosts, Egypt. Then at 7 p.m., of course, Kiswahili version crew led by Michael Were Mohusi alongside Simon Sepe Molama will be taking you through. Thanks for tuning in. And God bless.